Hello race fans and welcome to the Ultimate E-Driver Series Round 3 here from Donington Park. My name is Peter Mackay and joining me in the commentary box once again this evening is Jack Canan bringing you these beautiful images of Donington Park race circuit in its wonderful virtual form and these very snazzy graphics is Marco Barbonera in our production room in Rome. Jack, we've had, well, two thrilling rounds so far here in the Ultimate E-Driver series. We've had Formula 3 cars, we've had prototypes, and now, well, it's almost as if Enzo Mucci, the racing driver coach, was listening to the drivers who are all saying, oh, please, please, Enzo, can we drive a GT3 car? Well, tonight their requests have been answered. They certainly have. There was plenty of requests for GT cars, and... It seems Enzo has definitely listened because tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have got the Audi GT3 car for you tonight and around a brilliant circuit at Donington Park. Now, interesting choice, Donington, because I reckon a lot of the guys are going to have done a lot of running around here over the past couple of weeks because the VRS Endurance Series around here on the official iRacing so the both the endurance and the sprint series so i reckon these guys will have done plenty of laps around here i certainly did plenty of laps around here in the uh didn't i didn't exactly do very well but uh i've, I've also done plenty of laps at Donington. so um there's going to be plenty of guys that have done lots and lots of laps around here and especially in this car because this is the strongest gt3 car around donnington so it's a favour of plenty of people, and I'm interested to see how Phil Dennis do does this this week, our championship leader. But it seems different names are going to the top because right now it is Robert Tahan, the fastest man, Bradshaw, and last week's driver of the day, Gordy Much. Any all of the guys in Genetas and GTs are going to love this week. Absolutely, of course, this circuit is very, very popular here in the United Kingdom, both for testing and racing on. Of course, uh, hosts the. Uh, the British Touring Car Championship, British GT, and even the British Superbike Paddock as well. So it's well known, particularly to all the British base drivers. But of course, there's uh, a few drivers in the field who uh, might not be British, but of course do all of their racing here uh, as well. So it's going to be an exciting one. And uh, Jack, normally, as you as you mentioned, in official eye racing, where any user can, can roll up and, and have a race, the GT3 category is one of the probably one of the deepest fields and therefore the most competitive and to then get a group of drivers who, who are obviously prof all professional racing drivers in this car which seems to breed such close racing it's going to be super super tough tonight it really is when they're all in the same car as well so you can't make the excuses that the that it's <laughs> unbalanced with, with other cars you know uh, usually uh, my excuse for being slow around here is that everyone else was in an audi so <laughs> but it was uh, it's probably because i was just slow um, but yeah, so it's an equal field, equal cars, equal setup, uh, and equal amount of time to practice as well. So you've got that as well. But it's Robert Dehan currently the fastest, but Phil Dennis, he's just as quick in this, isn't he? Uh, P2, just a hundredth of a second off of that pole position. Callum Bradshaw is third, Gordy Much, Sandy Mitchell right in the mix there. There. But you can see just how close it is. There's nearly a second between 25 drivers here. It's incredibly, incredibly close, um, as it usually is around here. As we just ran aboard Kimi Antonelli, who was very entertaining uh, a couple of days ago in Silverstone. So he's going to chuck it through. The Chicago, we're using the Grand Prix layout, so we're using the back of the circuit as well. The VRS Endurance Series, you just used national layout. So you're using the chicane into the last corner. We're using the full loop here. But it seems that we're going to have a brand new pole sitter this week with uh, Robert Dehan looking like he's going to take that. So good to see a new name at the top and still Phil Dennis. He's right up there, isn't he? Yeah, just 19 thousandths off pole position for Phil Dennis so far. We'll see if he can improve on that in this qualifying session. But it's going to take a big lap at the end to do so. So we look at Enzo Mucci, our... Uh race organizer who put this wonderful event on for us all here uh one of my favorite descriptions of the uh the loop section which enzo is coming on to now here at donnington a kind of additional uh part that was added on to basically make the track grand prix length eddie lawson the uh four-time motorcycle grand prix champion referred to it as the parking lot section he didn't he didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exactly. It's not exactly great in these cars or in any cars. It's just it's it's it, all cars hate slow sections really. So it's uh, 
going to be tough for these guys, but here's your lineup for uh, race number one. It's Robert DeHaan on pole, Callum Bradshaw in second, Sandy Mitchell is third GT World Challenge, so hopefully very used to these cars. Alex Dunn, fourth, Bastian Boos, Kimi Antonelli, Liam McNeely, Matthew Payne, Bart Horston, and Josh Malin. Then the Danes, Mikkel Hoygaard and Sebastian Ogard, RP12. And then Jaden Conroy, Kian Donaldson, Ali Al Khalifa, Harry Cottrell, Voldemar Eriksson, Luke Browning, Tom Emson, Alfred Nilsson is 20th GT4 driver. So a little bit of a step up into a GT3 car. Uh, so that is your 20 car field for heat race. One, remember the top 15 go through. So there's only 20 cars. This is going to be pretty hard for. It certainly will be. As you can hear, the driver's absolutely sitting on the rev limiter. That's not necessarily excitement. It's actually the driver's trying to burn off fuel. We run a fixed setup here uh, in this series. So the driver's absolutely just trying to rev as much as they can and burn off a tiny bit of fuel. Certainly take, taking this very seriously and competitively. Watch for Sandy Mitchell in third spot. He's uh, a Lamborghini factory driver, just been announced as one, in fact, and knows the Lamborghini Huracan inside out, which shares the same engine and similar layout to this car. They are different cars, but powered by the same motor. Very, very, very short pace lap here for our drivers. Just one little go around the loop. So as you can see, all the drivers lurching forward and stopping and starting and you can see them doing that. The reason why they're doing that is they're trying to generate a little bit of heat in the brakes. Now, these GT3 cars do have anti-lock braking systems like you'd have in your road car, but uh, it's always nice to have a bit of temperature in the brakes when piling down towards turn one. Also trying to generate as much tire temperature as they can because when those tires are cold, they're pretty useless, but when they're warm, they stick like glue. So. Who's going to take this opening heat of the night? It's Fast and Furious here in the Ultimate E-Driver Series. Robert Dahan, our pole setter, leads away. He backs the field up, very clever, and then guns it, opens up over 500 horsepower, and down he goes, down towards turn one. At Redgate, very, very tricky corner. Just got to watch, to clip the apex, but... Robert DeHaan's done that beautifully, and it looks like Sandy Mitchell's just, he, he settles in in third position there, behind Bradshaw in second. Yeah, it's down into the old hair, but this is really tricky, especially if you, if you hit that curb a little bit too hard. So, as we see now, oh, Mikkel Hoygaard gets it wrong, and that's Gordy, Josh Malin, I think, is also in there in the gravel. So, something's gone wrong for those guys at the end of the old hairpin, but Robert DeHaan did that very, very nicely. And now settling into a line here. A little bit of a, of a little bit of twitch from Alex Dunn there. He's going to have to go defensive versus Bastian Boos up the hill. A little bit of a lunge from behind. Oh Lee McNeely gets into the back of him and spins him around. Nothing that Bastian Boos could have done right there. So he's in the gravel trap and that is going to not help him at all as they head down into the loop for the first time. But it's Han, Bradshaw, Mitchell, Dunn, Antonelli pretty much as they were. Lee McNeely, Matthew Payne, Bart Horston, uh, then... Olgard and Jaden Conroy is up a few spots as we head down into the hairpin. Look at this, Kian Donaldson under pressure from Luke Browning as a lunge up the inside into the hairpin. Gets it stopped very nicely. Trying to get the cut back there, Kian Donaldson can't quite get alongside as he chases Jaden Conroy in front of him. But as they head on to lap number two, great a little lunge again from Browning. Two cars and two corners. Can he get on the power again? Now these cars also have track control, adjustable track control as well which you, can, which you can use during the race of course but now there goes browning and you go around the outside of turn one very tricky to do that trying to get a cutback line as the head down the craner curves into the into the old hairpin he's alongside he's gonna have that inside line for the old hairpin this is really really tricky to make this work as they head into the old hairpin there's gonna be contact that was never gonna work as they come down the hill into the gravel trap Jaden conrad and luke browning and it's ended in tears again for two cars at the, at the old hairpin in the space of a lap yeah, that was uh, that was tricky down there. Um, it's been a high rate of attrition, oh, high rate of attrition so far in this race and going down Craner curves. Well, they always say if you haven't crashed at Craner curves curves before, you're about to. It's <laughs> it's certainly a hot spot for action and uh, those changes of direction, especially down into that uh, right hander at the old hairpin. Very very tricky as we ride on board with Tom Empson, the Genetta Super Cup star at the Fogarty S's. Oh. A move that Carl Fogarty himself would have been very proud of there. Just stuffs it up there 
and takes the position. Now, interestingly here, Jack, Robert Dahan not quite clearing off into the distance just yet, with Bradshaw and Sandy Mitchell right behind him. Mikkel Hoygaard's had another off. He's having a disaster here. He certainly is. He spun out there at the, at the fog of the S's as they came through. But yeah, Robert Dahan, he's not letting go because actually Callum Bradshaw was fast as Sandy Mitchell takes the fastest lap again. But look, they're all within about a tenth of each other. So they're not gaining and they're not really losing. But Sandy Mitchell is currently the fastest man out on track. Uh, they're gapping Alex Dunn, Kimi, uh, Kimi Antonelli and Liam McNeely behind. He's firmly in control. It's only a, th a five lap race. So he's only got uh, three laps to go. Uh, two, well, actually two and a half if you count this. So not long at all for Robert Dahan to go. This will be to put him on pole for the feature race of course uh, anyone below who finishes outside the top 15 here goes to the consolation race so uh, there goes McNeely lunging up the inside of Kimi Antonelli into the right hander gonna have to defend up the hill blind apex right hander up here on board with Antonelli as he tries to get up back up alongside don't want to hit that curve too hard on that inside gonna get a nice run down to the fog of the S's but again not quite able to get up alongside him so you get an idea of the speed into the S's here, almost touching 150 miles an hour as they chuck it through. And you've got to be really committed through there to get any kind of their big switch again from McNeely as they head down to the hair. But Antonelli surely going to stick with up the inside here if he possibly can. McNeely leaves the room. Antonelli gets it up the inside, gets it stopped, gets on the power nice and early. And he should be able to slot in front here as they head to the last corner. McNeely is still trying to stick it up the inside though, and it's way easier get a move up the inside but as they come through there so he's going to hang on for now but that's just dragged Matthew Payne, Bart Horston, uh, Mikel Oegaard and a couple of others right into the fray here and fastest man on track that time was not Robert Dahan it was actually Callum Bradshaw. Yeah that was a little mistake on our uh, timing screen there but uh, very close at the, at the front they've actually interesting Dahan and Bradshaw have just dropped Sandy Mitchell ever so slightly there at the front but uh, as usual Young Kimi Antonelli in the 203 car, really exciting young man to watch. He's got past McNeely, but a mistake there on the exit of the old hairpin as they head up through Schwant's curve towards McLean's. This is a really tricky place. Oh, be careful, boys. Yep, they get through clean, but uh, Kimi Antonelli moves ahead into fifth. Brilliant stuff there as well. Goodness me, we're on the penultimate lap already. Leaders will be taking the white flag to signify the last lap next time over the stripe. But this is quite a gaggle appearing behind Kimi Antonelli here, Jack. Yeah, it definitely is. I didn't even don't want to fight too hard because all these guys are guaranteed a spot in the feature if they don't if they don't fight too much. But of course, they just want they want that advantage, that extra grid slot, which could be very very useful to them. And <laughs> so we look now back to Robert Dahan at the front. As we can see, it's very, very marginal gains for all of them here. Here we go with Matthew Payne trying to go around the outside of Liam McNeil. He's going to get get done by Bart Horston there up the inside. And get, does he get in front? He's slightly in front as they head down towards turn one. Matthew Payne still very much alongside him here as they head towards turn number one. You can see Ogard looking for room there. He can't quite find any. Matthew Payne goes up the inside and gets it in front of Bart Horston. And behind Ogard gets alongside uh, the the car of Bart Horston slightly as they head down to the old hairpin through the Craner curves. Well, back to the way they were basically with Bart Horston looking very racy versus Matthew Payne. Australia versus New Zealand we're watching on board as well with Sebastian Ogard as he heads up to the right-hander. We're of course on that final lap. Uh, the man who's currently on the bubble is Jaden Conroy in P15. And he looks like he should be safe. He's got over a second to Josh Malin behind. So heading up into the final sector right now. All these guys vying for an extra grid slot. Uh, Robert Dehan's held on very, very nicely here. He, he, and he should be able to take that pole position for the feature race for the third round of the Ultimate E-Driver Series, would you believe? Into the hairpin, they come. Callum Bradshaw watching behind Sandy Mitchell, also right in the mix there. But these guys are in a, kind of in a class of their own, really. Oh, Three man. abreast, they go into the hairpin. Bart Horson on the outside. Matthew Payne trying to get a cutback line on Liam McNeely in front. He does get that, but McNeely will have the inside line for the last corner. Robert Dehan is going to win this one. He'll take the pole for the feature race. Callum Bradshaw is second. Sandy Mitchell is third now. Who's going to work, work it out between these guys? Matthew Payne gets it in front before the line. Bart Horst into the line. Watch out for Sebastian Ogard as well. They come almost <laughs> to, to blows across the line. Super, super close as they came, but it's Payne, Horst and McNeely and Ogard is your order. Huge Daxton across the line as well. A Bastian Boos, Luke Browning and Jaden Conroy is going to hold on a final feature race spot. The rest we will see 
in the consolation race. And as far as I can see, that is going to be probably even more chaotic because there's even less cars and even less spaces. Oh my, yes, it will be indeed. And uh, really surprised to see Josh Malin outside of the top 15. He's super, super quick in anything here in, in the iRacing simulator, but he will have a good grid spot at least for the consolation. So let's go through the results then. Robert Dahan confirmed as our winner by eight tenths of a second from Callum Bradshaw. Sandy Mitchell, the Lamborghini star, finishes in third, followed by Alex Dunn, Kimi Antonelli, Matthew Payne, Bart Horson, Liam McNeely, Sebastian Ogard, Tom Empson, Kyan Donaldson, Harry Cottrell, Bastian Boost, Luke Browning, and Jaden Conright getting that vital last spot in the feature automatically. Phil Dennis starts on pole position, our championship leader, our standout performer so far. Starting along, Mr. Charged through the field himself, Gordy Much, went from 35th to 10th in the feature at Silverstone two days ago. What can he do today at Donington? Row two will be Chris Lollum and Jonathan Hoggard, followed by Ross Gunn and William Chadwick. Elias Sipanen is seventh, followed by Dino Paganovic, Victor Anderson, Oli Behrman, Kasper Sukka, and Brandon Abraham. And finally, we have Isaac Blomquist, Oli Gray, Christopher Turhan, James Goldstein, Enzo Mucci, Luke Bennett, Russell Soto, and Ted Bradbury rounding out the 20 cars. Now, for fans of the Flying Barista, Mike Epps, unfortunately, he's a bit under the weather, Jack. He's got a very sore back, which is locked solid, and he's stuck in uh, he's stuck in bed. So, uh, no racing today for Mike Epps, and uh, we wish him well. And um, he's certainly given us some excellent entertainment with a heat race win at Spa back on Friday night. So, our Porsche. 911 pace car gathers the field up and will be pulling off shortly and Phil Dennis will be leading the field away in his number 32 Audi R8 LMS GT3 I think I've got that in the right order I hope ready to open up that 5.2 litre V10 the lights go green and Phil Dennis punches the throttle and off we go doesn't quite catch his rivals napping though they've got the measure Lullum and Much looking to just filter in behind oh a little bit of a blink there from I think that was Gordy Much and oh it's chaos oh no 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 oh, God. It's spun and oh it's oh my oh that's expensive that's 10 cars in turn one oh that my. we just witnessed there. That's the, that's an expensive, expensive crash that we just witnessed right there. There's Hoggard, Abraham, Tarhan, Sulta were all in it. Yeah, that's that's going to cost a lot of money. But here we go between uh, Gordy Much and Chris Lullum. Now remember, Chris Lullum and Phil Dennis are championship rivals. P2 in the championship for Lullum. P1 in the championship for Dennis. But Gordy Much is a fast man in GT cars around here. Uh, so on board we go with the man who charged from 35th on the grid to 10th two days ago. Now on the back of Chris Lullum, British F4 driver in front. Phil Dennis, Indy Pro 2000. And Gordy, of course, GT5 challenge. Elias Seppinen is a F3 regional. Uh, Chris, Christopher Tarhan, he's, he's been in the crash, but even so, he's actually um, still in the feature race at the moment in that 15 spot. And yeah. there goes another one. Kasper Stuka gets hit by Blomqvist as they came into the hairpin. Nothing he could have done about that one. Uh, through goes, uh, that is William Chadwick on Goldstein. And there, Kasper Stuka trying to, trying to get back going again. These cars are not easy to get back on the road uh, because of the traction control and the ABS. It kicks in and it's really slow to get moving on the grass. But Phil Dennis, once again, something he's very used to, leading from the front. Well, this is the only time we haven't seen him fastest in qualifying or winning in any of his respective heats or races. I'm sure he's about to put that back in order, is, uh, is Phil Dennis. But he's got his championship contender, Lollum, right behind, which you'll need to watch out for. But uh, Gordy Much, he's just, for me, he's just been the standout of the last couple of days. Such a racer. And uh, with a good finish here, who knows what he can do in the feature. And goodness me, this is absolute carnage here. Uh, it makes the F3 race look um, well, look like a Vickers tea party here, but this is uh, this is absolutely. I wonder if it's having the um, not having open wheels, the drivers just get their elbows out that little bit more. Yeah, it seems to be there. Chris Tarhan, he was 15th. Looks like he's dropped it at the old hairpin, so he's ended up back down there. But what is it about Enzo and getting from the back of the grid? He's done that twice now. <laughs> Enzo Mucci up to P8. 
from nearly the back of the field. Here comes William Chadwick trying to get past. Look at Enzo giving him a huge squeeze as they come down to the hairpin. Three wide they go. Chadwick in the middle. Ollie Behrman's on the outside trying to get a cutback line. That's textbook from Ollie Behrman on William Chadwick in front. Mucci trying to hang on here, but not quite able to get alongside there is Ollie Behrman as they head into the last corner to start lap three of five. Gordy, much fastest man out on track right now. That's the same pace as uh, Robert Dehan, 25.6. So Gordy is very, very quick in these cars, but there goes Chadwick, throws one up the inside of Enzo Mucci into turn one. Chadwick should get the run out as they head into the Craner curves. Enzo still alongside though, and a nose in front as they head toward the old heaven. We've seen this end, end badly before, and Chadwick's gonna lose the rear end and somehow keeps it in check. Big moments, but he loses two places. Yeah, huge moment there for William Chadwick. There, there is a lot of weight. 5.2 liter V10 in the middle of this car. It's got quite a short wheelbase, so it can be quite notoriously twitching. Just caught William Chadwick out. We've had William in the uh, commentary box for interview the last couple of rounds, and he said that this was the car that he'd love to see. This is the car that he really not specializes in, but certainly prefers, and he's, uh, he's backing that up with a top 10 run at the moment. But we go back to Gordy Much the Janetta driver, sponsored by the John Clark Motor Group here in Scotland. And a bit like in race one, Jack, it's a, it's a kind of leading trio that have uh, that have broken away, but neither of them able to make a much of an impression on Phil Dennis, but sounds daft, but this is, uh, this is the closest Phil Dennis has been to being challenged so far. Yeah, it certainly is. Look at the lap times now. They're so, so close together. Dennis, 25.6, London, 25.6. Gordy 25.76 so they're all within a tenth of each other under a tenth between them actually as we head across the line there is Russell Soto getting in front of William Chadwick who's trying to recover here as they head to down towards turn one Chadwick goes around the outside line that's unconventional for William Chadwick there but just manages to nip in front of the Formula V driver as they head down into the into the old hairpin he's got grey in front of him next but he's Still safely in the feature race at the moment. The last driver is going to progress at the moment is Luke Bennett as Ollie Gray gets out of shape, and that's going to be a slowdown for sure for William Chadwick on the curb there uh, as they come up to the right hander. I'm sure he's going to have to take a slowdown for coming that curb. It's notoriously bad, that curb, but uh, seems to be carrying on for now. May have just, just about marginally got away with it there, but he's managing to keep in front, and Ollie Gray gets a punt from Soto from behind, and he's going to drop down. Still going to be 14. Luke Bennett manages to somehow avoid him but he still should be safely in that feature in that 15th spot. Yep, just uh, the, the attrition rate has been so high <laughs> that uh, if you can keep the car on the straight and narrow, it's uh, you're in for a good result in this particular heat. As we look at Victor Anderson, uh, the uh, ARA F3 AM class champion. Uh, strange to call uh, <laughs> a real-world single-seater driver in the AM class, but all to do with his I rating here on the I racing service we've taken the white flag so phil dennis onto his final lap with championship rival chris lollum right behind just half a second in arrear so right there if phil dennis were to make a mistake but he's yet to make one i've yet to see him make one and uh, in this particular car at the pace he's going he's really dancing it on the edge very very impressive indeed and this car, I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful sounding car, Jack, isn't it? I mean, this car, it's won the Spa 24, the Nürburgring 24, the Bathurst 12, and the Daytona 24. So it's won the lot, but believe it or not, and I say this relatively, it's relatively one of the cheapest GT3 cars to run of them all. I guess that's why it's been so successful. So many teams yeah. run them because they're, because they're so cheap compared to other ones. I mean, um, the, Mercedes is, it, it, the Mercedes GT3 is, a, is an extortionate price compared to this. So uh, I can see why plenty of customer teams do opt for the Audi uh, as they head in, uh, now to the last corner. Phil Dennis is going to hang on to take another race win. He's the, the, the driver who's won the most races this season. This is going to be his fourth race win of the season. Crosses the line and takes the flag for heat race two. He starts second on the grid now as we head now, as Enzo Mucci still trying to keep Ollie Behrman behind them as they head to the line here. Behrman gonna try and get a cut back here, but Enzo just hanging on that inside line. Parks the bus, but a good exit for Behrman, but Enzo Mucci gonna hang on for P8 there, as Ollie Behrman is gonna be P9. James Goldstein 
William Chadwick, P11, just about Soto, Stuka, Bennett, and Jonathan Hoggard. Is he going to lose out to Ollie Gray to the line? This is a race to make it to the feature race, and it's going to be Hoggard just oh. by a nose across the line. So Ollie Gray is going to have to go to the consolation race. So this is going to be, as far as I know, a 10-car consolation, which is going to be, I think, a little bit chaotic. Well, it's, uh, it always is, isn't it? There's always just an air of desperation in the uh, consolation race or the last chance to loon race, wherever you want to look at it. Well, let's have a look at the results then for this second heat of the evening before we move into the last chance saloon here at Donington Park. So here we go. Confirming then, Phil Dennis wins by six tenths of a second from Chris Lullum, with Gordon Match finishing in third. Elias Seppinen, the Finn, was fourth, followed by Victor Anderson, Isaac Blomquist, Ted Bradbury, good good drive from Ted in the 28 car, followed by Enzo Mucci, Ollie Behrman, and James Goldstein. 11th was William Chadwick, and the rest up to 15th, making their way through. Not a problem. There, that, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Russell Refused Soto to tally the apologies in the back. Looked <laughs> at Jonathan Hoggard. Okay, let's go back, uh, dear producer. Thank you. Josh Malin and Ollie Gray start on the front row of the grid. That's going to be a good battle. Row two will be Ali Al Khalifa and Brandon Abraham. Row three will be Mikhail Hoygaard and Christopher Turhan. Row four, Alfred Nielsen and Dino Beganovic and Valdemar Eriksson and Ross Gunn start on row five. Now, Ross Gunn won't thank me for bringing this up. I was at the Daytona 24 hour this year, or uh, just a year ago, actually. Uh, Jack and, and Ross was there uh, debuting for the uh, the Aston Martin factory at Daytona, and uh, unfortunately he did something. Well, he joined a very exclusive and prestigious club, and that club is the club who have um, uh, hit the pit wall in the middle of the night on exit. <laughs> it, honestly, some of the biggest names in sports car racing have hit that wall in the in the cold of the night at Daytona. Yeah, he's definitely not going to thank you for bringing that one up. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, Roscoe, he's down at the back in this one, see if he can get through. There, there's your championship standings, by the way. Phil Dennis, 50 points. Chris Lullum is second, 36. Bart Horston, third. Mike Epps, who's missing today, is P, is P4. Robert DeHaan might be able to jump him there for that fourth spot. But 10 cars, five spots. So this is going to be as probably as chaotic as you're going to get. I know we have big grids in some ones, but it's always the ones that have the, the, the smallest grids that are the most chaotic because we saw a 10 car smash in the previous one so here we go Josh Malin will control the pace here on the inside for turn one Ollie Gray and then Brandon Abraham and Ali Al Khalifa as we head to the green flag here and across the line they go decent start from Malin but a good reaction time from Ollie Gray that time to head towards turn number one you can see uh, Christopher Tarhan slotting in there Ali Al Khalifa trying to slot up into P3 on the other drivers there through they go they keep it nice and clean the one car runs out wide which is Christopher Tarhan he's going to lose out to a couple of drivers there he drops down to the back so it's Madeline Gray Abraham Ali Al Khalifa going to spin it in the old hairpin he's going to collect uh, another car there couldn't quite see who it was that he collected Dino Beganovic yeah you're right Dino Beganovic got collected in innocently there everyone else made it through but Ali Al Khalifa is now out Beganovic is going to carry on I hope and but it'll be then Tara and Eriksson Hoygaard were on board but looking back Alfred Nilsson is in that final spot to the feature with Josh Malin and Ollie Gray it is a, a British 1-2-3-4 at the moment it is yep absolutely a little bit of a crusade and good start there from Ross Gunn up to 4th position from 10th on the grid he's obviously fired up after me bringing up the Daytona pit wall incident Jack obviously it's, uh, it's got him raring to go here at Donington Park as they head on to the loop section down towards the Melbourne hairpin. Probably because it feels like you're driving all the way down to Melbourne, all the way down to the end of the uh, the end of the facility there, and then back up the hill again to the Goddard's hairpin, which is normally a chicane when you run the national layout. So we're coming back to the point of cost on this car, uh, Jack. Uh, I believe that apparently, according to DailySportsCar.com, this Audi costs 13 euros per kilometer to run in the real world. A Ferrari GT3 car, 39 euros per kilometer. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, you can kind of see the difference there between uh, German efficiency and Italian. Uh, just just throw everything Zubrin. in the car, make it fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> So they don't, they, yeah, the Ferrari obviously is a very stable car in iRacing, but the Audi 
is very strong when you've got the right driver in it uh, and all of these guys getting the most out of this car on the fixed setup. Josh Malin is just checking out. He is gone. 2.1 seconds, showing what he can do. Now, Brandon Abraham, he just picked up a slowdown through the right-hander. Very easy to do that. So he's going to lose a spot all the way down past Alfred Nilsson goes. Can Hoidgaard get into that final feature a spot? Yes, he can. So one mistake has just dropped Brandon Abraham a couple of spots and actually dropped him out of the feature for now. Now, he's got no real problems from behind. Dino Boganovic is the only driver still running around. Tarhan Eriksson and Al Khalifa are all in the pit lanes and they're not going to have a chance. So Brandon Abraham and uh, Mikkel Hoyer are going to have are going to have to fight hard for this one. But uh, you can see that small error at the at that blind right hander. If you get if you get over the curb a little bit too much, it'll give you a slowdown penalty, which you've got to serve. And it's it feels worse, especially when you're taking it down that long long straight. But you can see, look at the pace from Josh Miller. He's nine tenths of a second faster than Ollie Gray per lap. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's super, super fast. And, what, you know, Josh Malin, one of the fastest guys in this championship, in the, the sim here, because once he gets that clean air, he just gets into that rhythm and goes goes along at quite a rate of knots and doing a grand job so far. Such a shame there for uh, Beganovic, who's actually recovered really well with a damaged car. He's up to seventh now, but Al Khalifa just spinning on cold tyres on that change of direction into the old hairpin, and... He had absolutely nowhere to go, and the pair of them, they just tumbled into the gravel at such a rate of knots. Yeah, it's, it, it's horrible as well. When the when the ABS kicks in on the grass, there's absolutely nothing you can do. It's going in the wall whether you like it or not. So uh, the trash control can't, it doesn't help you when you get into a slide, really, because it, it, it actually makes the slide worse trying to save it. So your best bet is to just slam on the brakes and hope it comes back around again. But... Um, it's, uh, it is a shame for all those who were involved in that one. Last lap coming up on the consolation race uh, in this one. Only a four lap per before we head to the eight lap feature race. In just a few moments time. But Josh Malin is going to take this by a landslide by the looks of it uh, as they come through the last corner. White flag for Josh Malin at the front of the field. 125.8. He's not, he's not far off the pace of the leaders. Actually, the fastest guys were running 25.6. So Josh Malin has got the pace. It's just a shame. He's probably not going to be able to show exactly what he can do in the feature is because he's going to be starting uh, right at the back of the field and Beganovic is going to just come in and uh, obviously probably retire that car so that's going to leave six, six drivers running so Brandon Abraham is going to miss out on that feature race but it is going to be a shame for Josh Miller know how fast he is but he's not going to be able to quite show that because he's going to be starting at the last two rows of the field well, as yet. there goes Hoygaard with a mistake and Abraham's back in it yep that was it that was uh, he was certainly close enough just to capitalise what has happened then to Hoygaard up ahead down through Crane as we go down towards the old hairpin which is actually somewhere where I just you don't like a car with ABS because it starts and biting and nibbling there if you don't get it quite right and oh just just a small mistake big consequence and that's going to drop Hoygaard out without any other uh, happenings but who knows as we see Ollie Gray and Ross Gunn hopping their Audis all over the curbs there through the Fogarty chicane but Josh Malin, he has been imperious, and you're absolutely right, Jack. He's running the leading pace, just didn't get the rub of the green in his heat. But, as we've seen, these early laps can be absolute chaos, and the feature race is a longer race. So who knows, he might carve through, he might do a bit of a gordy match. But Josh Malin is your winner in the consolation race, and will move through with the fastest lap of the race, right at the, right at the dying moment there. Ollie Gray second, with Ross Gunn third, Nielsen fourth, and Abram getting the last spot. And Hoygaard, he is done for the day. And so here is the American Tarhan. So next up is the feature race. And I think it's going to be an absolute cracker. There were kind of two sets of, of uh, three drivers in each heat jack who looked mighty, mighty impressive. And uh, add those all together and we should, we should get a bit of a punch up at the front. Yeah, certainly are. There's going to be definitely a, a, probably a six-car fight for that win. Uh, so hopefully they, they keep it clean. There's going to be uh, Robert DeHaan on the pole and Phil Dennis. And next to him, there's going to be a couple of others just right behind him as well. So it's going to be... It is going to be very interesting to watch. And we're just waiting for Chris Tarhan to actually cross the line because he's a lap down. He's, he's still finishing out the race. But you saw there Josh Malin, 25-6 right at the end. So he's on the pace of the leaders. It's just a shame he's going to be starting uh, right at the back in, uh, in about... 22nd, 23rd spot, so 
Tarhan crossed the line. He's the last car to finish. Gets it across the line. He won't be. It'll be the last we see him of him today. Unfortunately for Christopher Tarhan, but we head to the feature race in just a few moments' time. An eight lapper coming up for you now. Robert Dahan on the pole for the first time this season. Phil Dennis on the front row. He has not started off the front row once this season. Callum Bradshaw is third. Chris Lullum is fourth. Sandy Mitchell and Gordy Much inside the top six right there. So watch out for Gordy Much. Alex Dunn, seventh, Elias Seppin in his eighth, Kimi Antonelli and Victor Anderson round out your top ten. Then outside your top ten, Matthew Payne is eleventh and Isaac Blomqvist just behind there. Then Bart Horston and Ted Bradbury, Lee McNeely and Enzo Mucci in sixteenth. Sebastian Ogart, Ollie Behrman, Tom Emson, James Goldstein, Kean Donaldson, William Chadwick, 22nd, Harry Cottrell, then Russell Soto is 24th. Then Bastian Boos, Casper Stuka, Luke Browning, Luke Bennett, Jaden Conroy, Jonathan Hoggard, Josh Malin, 31st, Ollie Gray, Ross Gunn, Alfred Nilsson, and at the very back in 35th spot, Brandon Abraham. Let's see what he can do. But they're rolling off the grid right now. It's the first pole position for Robert Dehan. Can he break the winning streak, Peter? Because it's been Phil Dennis for the past couple of days. Well, this is the best chance he's got starting from the front of the pack. The overtaking opportunities are really hard earned here at, uh, at Donington Park. As, oh, we've got one of the Bureau Suit cars off. That's Elias oh, Seppinen oh. having a... That's an alternative tyre warming technique. Uh, well, we've, we've, <laughs> we've seen it this week, haven't we, in the iRacing community? Some alternative tyre warming uh, um, techniques, shall we say? Like, said about that, the better, I guess. Um, <laughs> we see Robert Tan... <laughs> The Dutchman about to lead us away, right beside the Porsche 911 pace car. Tries to look at this, goes for the nice wide entry and oh, backs the field up. Oh, that's naughty, naughty, naughty. But oh, oh off he goes. Robert, it doesn't matter a jot. Off he goes and Phil Dennis is thinking, oh, you little scamp. I'm going to go after you now as Callum Bradshaw goes up the inside into second position and Dennis Back to third, he doesn't know anything about that kind of universe, Jack. That was uh, that was very clever from Robert Zahan. That was well executed. That's a proper karting start from uh, Robert Zahan right there. Oh, loose for Bradshaw. Round he goes, and he loses it in the old hairpin. He, uh, Dennis manages to avoid a big moment into the back of the barrier. Goes Callum Bradshaw, and that's not the first time we've seen that. So that's unfortunate for him. He's running there. Isaac Blomqvist also a victim of the old hairpin through there. But it's Robert Zahan who leads. Phil Dennis is second. Chris Lullum is now on his tail. Victor Anderson Ooh. joins them in the in the second gravel trap. Enzo Mucci Ooh. being one as well as a high speed off there for another car as well that was i believe it was Jaden conright before he went into the gravel at high speed robert dehan then phil dennis chris lullum championship rivalry is there behind him then it's gordy much sandy mitchell elias seppin and alex dunn clean away kimmy antonelli matthew payne bart horston uh, ted bradbury and then mcneely so clean start for all of these guys up front at least but it's, uh, it seems Robert Dehan, he's got he's actually got a, a decent small gap now because we, now you can see Dennis is going to be under a little bit of pressure. But you can see one, two, three, four, five. Top five have already broken away. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think Phil Dennis is going to be like, yeah, very funny, Robert, but I'm going after you now. Um, <laughs> that was an amazing, cunning start right on the edge of probably what's allowable, but very, very good indeed. Great start from the young Dutchman. Following in the footsteps of so many great Dutch sports car racing drivers, Jeroen Blakemolen, Jan Lammers, or even Heis van Lennep. Really, really impressive heritage in that particular country. So, it's uh, interesting. We're going to get a little bit of a different complexion to this race, it seems, Jack, with uh, with a, a bit more of a, lar a larger leading group, and Phil Dennis having to, well, sing for his supper a wee bit here. Yeah, Robert Dehan's 1.1 in front now, so he's actually, Dennis is the man under pressure right now from, from his championship rival behind, so it's a, it's a perfect opportunity for London to gain some points back here. They've been the most consistent this season. Uh, now behind, there is Alex Dunn and Kimi Antonelli, two characters right together. Uh, Matthew Payne in P8 right there, the New Zealander. And then further down here, because James Goldstein, that's, uh, right, that is Jonathan Hoggard in front of Harry Cottrell and Luke Bennett. Uh, and it's been a good start, actually, for Ross Gunn. He's come up to 17th. He's right in the middle right there. He started right at the back of the field. Big oh, lunge from Bastian Boos behind. Oh Was that a double overtake from Bastian Boos? He couldn't quite get it stopped, though. 
I, I'll give him points for effort, but it's going to end in tears uh -oh. uh, between Bastian Boos and, and uh, I, could, I think it was Harry Cottrell right there. But that, that uh, there's another three abreast moment right here. Oli Behrman in the middle. There's Victor Anderson and Josh Malin who started at the uh, down near the back as well. But Victor Anderson is the man who comes back just a nose in front. There's the command towards turn number one. Uh, so it's not been the cleanest of starts for everybody. Slow down penalty for Ollie Behrman. He's going to lose some spots there as they head towards turn one. Harry Koshra are going to get through as well. William Chadwick as well. But yeah, Ross Gunn's had a good effort from the back of the field. Up to 17th spot as we ride on board with the man who gave us plenty of entertainment last time. It's uh, Kimi Antonelli. Yep, we're riding on board with the young Italian right now. He's got his fellow uh, Carter Alex Dunn up ahead who has impressed me so much during this uh, during this series he's been super quick in every single car we've used we've had an f3 single seater we've had a delara lmp2 car and now audi gt car what on earth will we get next i get this sink i get this uh, sneaky feeling jack that it's going to be something a little bit more off the wall i mean i wonder what it could whoa goodness me that's not what you want to see sebastian ogard there looking the wrong way with a load of audi r8s coming straight towards him that will give you nightmares but uh, Notice there that Sebastian Oigard there is sponsored by Mont Blanc, so he certainly have a fancy pen to uh, to sign his contract with. Yeah, uh, he's struggling. He's gonna he's struggling to get that car back going again. I'm assuming he's got suspension damage. That car is not really going where he wants it to go uh, down the straight there. There's Brandon Abraham, 35th to 20th so far for Brandon Abraham. Good start from the back of the field. He's got Lee McNeely in front, who's got damage on the rear of his car. So good drive from the Mazda MX-5 driver so far. And then just in front of the of, of McNeely is Enzo Mucci in that 18th spot. So good stuff from these guys so far. So 35th seems to be a lucky starting position for many. Gordy Much went from 35th up to 10th last time. Brandon Abraham up inside the top 20 right now. Here we are now. Chris Lullen losing touch with Phil Dennis and Gordy Much, who we're just talking, talking about actually, is right behind him. And Dennis now actually starting to put some pressure on Robert De Haan. I wonder. Was Dennis just holding back and saving up those tyres for a little attack? Quite possibly, yeah. He's he's certainly a, a smart driver and knows the sim very very well. Super experienced here on iRacing. Uh, very very important indeed. But uh, Chris Lullum not letting them away with it right now. But he's got big pressure. Well, from the uh, the two flying Scots, Gordon Much and Sandy Mitchell, as we see Elias Seppinen. Oh, that's. That's a big lunge oh, there, and oh, he's going to get caught. Oh, he's lucky there, wasn't he, Elias Seppinen? Nearly plowed by the two cars behind. A little bit of a flash of the lights there, and uh, who could blame him? He lunged back down again on Luke oh, Browning yeah. here as they came on the eggs. You can see behind there's a battle between uh, Kian Donaldson and Jonathan Hoggard as well. Uh, there, Ross Gunn is on the back of that three-car train as well. As there goes Seppinen again with a big back, lunge back to the inside. So it's Ted Bradbury, sorry, on Luke Browning. He gets back through. Browning gets the eggs, though. So they're going to be side by side with the Craner curves. This has not ended well this whole race long on board with Luke Browning as he fights the car through the Craner curves. You can see, oh, where is that car gone? Rejoins in front and somehow comes out in in front Luke Browning there and now here comes Donaldson Hoggard and Ross Gunn and let's see if we can have a look at that again so on board with Bradbury now it's, was there a touch I wonder to mm. the trainer curves I reckon so as they come down here into the left there oh, yeah. it is right there, there. and again One two twice twice so Ted Bradbury had to come off the throttle there and rejoin still managed to rejoin very well but a touch twice here's uh, Kimi Antonelli now as Antonelli had an issue as well um, he's run onto that outside curb and spins it around. Matthew Payne has to avoid. That's such an easy thing to do. Kimi Antonelli is running really well inside the top five. And uh, now, unfortunately, he's got to wait for all those cars to pass by. Oh, that's the worst feeling in the world when you, you're so angry with yourself for making a mistake and you just see the cars going by like, no, no, no. And you're just like, oh, this is torture. Awful. But look at Ross Gunn still climbing up the field up to 14th now there in that kind of green and dark blue car but Jonathan Hoggard running the lead of this pack right now in, a, in 11th spot but still back at the front Robert Dehan leads only two laps to go after this one as they go down Craner curves to the old hairpin of course those absolutely infamous Craner curves named after Fred Craner whose uh, idea it was to start racing here at Donington Park 
Here we go. Ross Gunn's got in front of the wall of them. Look at that. P12 for Ross Gunn. Luke Bennett, 13th. Donaldson and Bradbury going at it right there. But Ross Gunn's come from basically the back of the field all the way up to that 13th spot. Um, so great stuff from him as we now look at this. Phil Dennis on Robert Zahan to try and make it three feature race wins in a row. Look, he's pushing Robert Zahan through the chicane as he comes down to the hairpin. Robert Zahan going to have to go defensive here. Phil Dennis, a wily character. Zahan defends the inside. Now to the outside line goes Dennis. But watch out, Lullum's going to get in the mix here. Look at this, Robert's going to push him wide. Here comes Lullum, he's got him shortly. Side by side, the two championship rivals. Chris Lullum on the outside line into the last corner. Dennis is going to go lay on the brakes here, trying to stick it back up the inside. Lullum knows he's coming, goes for the cutback line, lets him back through and tries to get the run down towards turn one. But lap seven of eight, two to go. And Dennis finally piling that pressure on, but just that one attack has dropped him into the clutches of his championship rival. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, there, Robert DeHaan wasn't in any mood to give Phil Dennis any kind of room at all. And a little just nudge of contact, and that just took the wind out the sails of Phil Dennis. And like you say, Jack, dropped him into the clutches of Chris Lullum. And wow, you look at the rotation and the turning there going through the old hairpin. Proper commitment up to Schwantz curve they come. Named after oh, my favorite motorcyclist of all time, Kevin Schwantz, rode for the Suzuki factory and won the world championship. Absolutely super. I absolutely love Donington. It's such a cool circuit. But Robert DeHaan is the master of it so far. And interestingly, these guys just breaking away a fraction despite that little bit of back and forth. Uh, Gordy Much and Sandy Mitchell not quite able to run the pace of the top three. Yeah, it doesn't look like I see Ross Gunn dropped out. So Ross Gunn is out of this race. Didn't quite see what happened to him, but I, I would imagine for Ross Gunn. So, so uh, it's unfortunate for him, but look at this um, as, we, as we carry on. But the, yeah, it's been crazy so far look at this Dennis leads look at that Robert DeHaan's dropped two spots as they come on to the final lap Dennis leads Lullum is second so a mistake from Robert DeHaan white flag in the air Gordy Much is in the mix now look P4 Sandy Mitchell and Alex Dunn sixth car five for the win Lullum looks to the inside but somehow Phil Dennis has come out on the lead Lullum now almost back in the clutches of Robert DeHaan something has occurred there and I think Lullum might oh look at that Robert DeHaan losing the rear end down in the Craner curves but Dennis pulls out a half a second on them here as they come down into the old hairpin for the last time. Good run from Robert DeHaan through there. Can he maybe nip some points here off the championship rival of Phil Dennis? Look at this defending from Chris Lullum, British F4 driver. Carts are there behind him in Robert DeHaan. Here's Gordy Much once again. P4 man. Sandy Mitchell hanging in there as well. Robert DeHaan to the inside. Can he maybe lunge it up here as they come through? But look, look at this. The cutback line for Gordy Much behind. He may lose some spots here as they come down into the fog of the S's. This has been crazy, but Phil Dennis is one 1.1 in front already is on the final lap now here comes Dahan he's gonna have to defend there goes Gordy much up the inside p3 for the Scotsman great move from him as they come into the last lap and now defensive line for Gordy much Robert Dahan trying everything to try and get back past again as they come into the hairpin for the last time there goes Alex Dunn out of nowhere on the outside line of Sandy Mitchell into the last corner can he nip a top five here from Sandy Mitchell but nothing is gonna stop that man out in the lead it's three days in a row, Phil Dennis does it again at Donington. He wins the feature race, and round goes Sandy Mitchell in the last corner. It's Lullum, Much, Robert Zahan, and Alex Dunn, P5, Payne, Horston, Mitchell, Seppinen, and Browning fighting for the line here as ninth and 10th, they come across the line. Once again, a crazy end, but somehow Phil Dennis is winning again. Uh, when you get in that winning mentality, I wouldn't know, I've just been told. Yeah. <laughs> When you get in that winning mentality, it just, just becomes a habit. So what happened to Robert DeHaan? I mean, Phil Dennis putting a lot of pressure under him. He just makes the smallest mistake on the braking. And he thought, coming through. And what was just exceptional here, Jack, was just how Phil Dennis, as soon as he got that clear air, he just hit the afterburners. He wasn't leaving anything to chance. Let's have a look what happened to Sandy Mitchell. He's getting into a little bit of a punch up here with Alex Dunn and oh big help there well it's so so typical there at the Goddard's hairpin to get a little bit of argy bargy and that was what happened there but uh, you got to feel for Chris Lollum because he's been right thereabouts the whole time oh dear <laughs> but uh, still Phil Dennis is our winner once again it's three in a row 
can he do the sweep? We'll find out in just two days' time. Uh, Friday night, 7 p.m. But let's have a look at the results then. Phil Dennis confirmed he had to work for it this time. Chris Lallum in second, eight tenths in the rear, with Gordy Much getting a podium right at the death there, just 2.1 seconds behind our winner. Robert Dehan led the whole race from pole. Unfortunately, just the tiniest of mistake dropped the Dutchman to fourth. Alex Dunn, a great charge from him, as you said, Jack, coming from nowhere to take fifth. Matthew Payne was sixth, followed by his fellow Antipodean, Bart Horston with Sandy Mitchell eight, Elias Seppin in ninth, and Luke Browning tenth. Jonathan Hoggard was 11th, followed by Luke Bennett, Kyan Donaldson, Josh Malin, Kimi Antonelli, Brandon Abraham, Victor Anderson, and Enzo Mucci, finishing about mid-pack there. Russell Soto was 19th, followed by Kasper Zucca, William Chadwick, Liam McNeely, Ross Gunn, Ted Bradbury, James Goldstein, Ollie Berman, Harry Cottrell, and Sebastian Ogard. And finally, Bastian Boost, Alfred Nielsen, Callum Bradshaw, Isaac Blomquist, Tom Empson, Jaden Conright, and Ollie Gray round out our 35 runners. Well, Jack, what was uh, your thoughts of, of that one? That was uh, that was a different complexion to what we've seen so far. It wasn't quite the Phil Dean's demolition job, but he still got the uh, the win in the end. Yeah, I think it's the mark of a true of a true uh, championship contender. Is if you can, it's not your day, but even so, still managed to come through and take a win. But it was a great overtake he managed to do. The space was there, he used it, and he pulled out the gap when he needed to. So, uh, a fantastic one for him. He's actually, as always, standing by in the interview waiting room. Is uh, is Phil Dennis? So, uh, Peter, I'll leave him to you. As always, here's Phil Dennis. Well, Phil, you're first to the checkered flag, and you're always first in to chat to us. Uh, that was a different race than the first couple. Uh, how was that one for you? Uh, it was a lot more exciting, you could say. Uh, in qualifying, I made a little mistake on my quick lap and just got beat a little bit by Robert, and he made me work for it in that race. You know, I got passed by Callum in the first corner, and he made that mistake, and there was a little bit of a gap between Robert and I, and... I wasn't being, I was just missing my marks here and there, and I finally got into a rhythm, and I ran down Robert, and he was making it tough on me to pass, and I finally found a little bit of room, and I went for it, and we made a little bit of contact, but it was, uh, I think it was a good move, and I'm happy to come out with the win, and, you know, three in a row in this series is awesome with such a competitive field, couldn't be happier. Absolutely. Now, tell us about the start. Robert, he, uh... He had a slightly alternative uh, technique there, but seemed to keep catch the field napping. Uh, what was your view on the uh, the start there? Yeah, I think it was fine. I mean, people tend to do that at this track. They go a little bit wide to get a better run, and he, he tricked us a little bit. He went a little bit and then lifted and then went. Uh, fair play from him. It was, it was a good start and caught us napping, but at, in the end, ran him back down and made the move stick, so... Absolutely. I have to say, it was a bit strange uh, seeing the uh, Burosud uh, Zebra on an Audi rather than your typical BMW, actually, uh, uh, as well. Tell us about that, the, your new team, Burosud, uh, one of the most eye-catching liveries uh, in the sport right now. Yeah, uh, we didn't have a livery for this car, so my teammate Elias Sepanin decided to whip up a quick paint. Almost looked like the real one, you could say. And... I couldn't be happier, you know, as I said, I've, things have been going great on this team, and although we don't normally drive these cars, you know, it's always good to have some sort of paint representing the team on the car. Indeed, and uh, look, looking ahead um, over the next couple of weeks, will you uh, will you be at, uh, at Daytona in, in iRacing with the Bureau Suit guys? Yeah, we have a busy schedule, actually. I'll be doing the uh, CO on Saturday, I'll be doing BMW 120 on Sunday, and then Daytona 24 the week after, so a whole lot of big races coming up. Well, Philip, we wish you the very best of luck with that. Congratulations on a third win in a row, and looking forward to chatting again in two days' time. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. So that was our winner, Phil Deans. Uh, Jack, why don't we get Gordy Much in for a chat, because he uh, we haven't chatted to him yet, and he has been... Oh, absolutely, a front runner. Uh, I'll hand him over to you now. Yeah, Gordy, welcome into the commentary box. It's been a while since we, uh, since we last had you in there, but uh, a 35th to 10th uh, two days ago, and now finally standing on the podium. Seems you're getting your feet in, getting right stuck in in this championship. No, 
know, absolutely. Uh, the Silverstone race was really, really fun. The, the heat didn't go to plan, hence why I started off the back of the consolation race and came through, came through to get P5. So qualified last for the feature race and uh, had a rather uh, hectic race. I managed to get up to 10th to in that race. And today, um, of course, the Audi is the car that I, I like quite a lot. Uh, I didn't quite get the quality lap that, um, you know, I, I should have made a, a small mistakes on my lap. So uh, I knew that was going to make it hard for myself when it came to the, the main race. Um, but no, managed to keep clean, waited for an opportunity. I knew it was going to get messy in the last few laps between uh, Phil and uh, Robert. So me and Chris sort of just waited till an opportunity. And uh, I absolutely sent it on, uh, into the chicane. I saw an opportunity. I came, I came onto the, the back straight. I came out of coppice and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I put him into the position where, you know, I was sort of trying to tell him I'm going to, you know, no, just, you know, take the chicane normally. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to go for that move, sort of positioned him to the middle of the track, but in a place where I'd still have a gap to, to go for the inside line. And uh, it worked out perfectly. So I uh, got a nice podium. So quite happy with that race. Yeah, good stuff. Um, obviously, we're in now, 2021, a new year, a new, uh, a new season of racing. So what, what's your own plans uh, for this year, Gordy? Uh, well, you know, I think right now it's it's difficult to make plans. Um, of course, COVID uh, has make it made it extremely uh, hard to to source funding. So, but as of recently, uh, we've had a few conversations, and hopefully, we've got uh, some things in the pipeline. Uh, it's along the lines of GT racing. Uh, so right now, it's a bit about doing a bit of I'm hard like work, Knoxville. making a few. Yeah. A uh, few, uh, few phone calls and uh, keep the fingers crossed and hope everything goes out well. But hopefully, it's, it's going to be along of the line of GTs. Good stuff. Looking forward to seeing you, uh, seeing your plans for that. But uh, before we let you go, Gordy, is there anyone you'd like to give a, a quick uh, thank you to on Apex Racing TV? Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to say thanks to the, the guys at uh, Vibe Esport. Uh, we all sort of practice together uh, and uh, we're all very close within that team. So. Uh, sort of come in here. I think we had some mixed results today, but uh, that's all. That's all part of it. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to the guys at Racecraft as well. Uh, I've been working with them in SEO and Neil with the Audi. So uh, yeah, no, I'd like to say thanks to those guys, and uh, hopefully we can have a, another good race next time out. Good stuff. Looking forward to seeing that. Thanks for joining us, Gordy. We'll see you in uh, two days' time, hopefully. Cheers. Yeah, Gordy's always always a good character to chat to. Um, so. I'm not sure if we've got time for for one more, but Peter, if so, we, we do have time for one more, says Marco. So, Peter, you have your choice. Well, I think we've Kyle Donaldson has come in to join us every time, and we haven't had a chat with him, so why don't we do this? Kyle, welcome to the Apex Racing TV commentary box. Uh, how was your day there out there at Donington Park? Uh, well, we, we started quite well for me, because usually, obviously, we have had issues getting into the into the final in the past with incidents etc but I, in the end i'm um, decently pleased with it i think uh, there was a little bit of um rough driving there by a few people very door to door and shoved off here and there taking no uh no uh yeah yeah no it was it was okay in the end how is your um i mean obviously we've had uh, we've had span an f3 car we've had silverstone in a lmp2 and now a gt car here at uh, donnington i wonder what enzo's got up his sleeve for uh, for friday night but how's your experience been of the uh, ultimate e-driver series so far well yeah well i was uh, one of the first ones to so i was actually here when it was the isolation uh, e-races back in may or april 2020 so i've been here quite a bit so i've seen um quite a lot of change in that but in terms of the ultimate e-driver series i think um my experience in this has been quite good. I think it's a, it's a good new platform, very accessible to anyone pretty much. And um, yeah, I think with the cars and the, and the track combinations, it's been very, very difficult. Because obviously I'm used to uh, driving Mazda MX-5s, which you don't really drive like normal race cars in that sense. But no, I think it's been extremely challenging, obviously with F3. GT, LMP2, I think, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to see what Enzo's got, it got up his sleeve for the final. Well, maybe some MX-5s, that would be fun. 
Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what would happen, especially if it's Long Beach. <laughs> MX5s at Long Beach. Oh my! <laughs> turn turn one will be a will be a will be a car park. Well, kind of. It's like uh, as we've said before. It's uh, it's now 2021. Time to look forward to a new racing season. Hopefully in the not too distant future uh, is it Mazda MX-5s this year or or a change of uh, a change of series well um yeah well yeah no, it is uh, the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 series again which hopefully fingers crossed we're going to try and challenge from the for the title this year fingers crossed and um maybe do a few of um some, maybe something on the toker package if we've got enough money left over I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that a lot. I've got a, a friend who races in the Mini Challenge, so uh, yeah, that's uh, the Toka, Toka package. There's lots to, to get excited about there. Kyle, before we let you go, um, is there anyone you'd like to shout out to here on Apex Racing TV? Well, yeah, I'd like to shout out my uh, my main sponsors, Chromatography Direct. Um, I'd like to shout out um, Andy Prio Sports Management and iZone Performance for putting up with me and uh, <laughs> and helping me drive. <laughs> <laughs> quick <laughs> but um who else I obviously I'd like to thank me mum like uh, everyone does <laughs> uh i think that's it thank you well there's one of the most successful sports car drivers everywhere uh scott pruitt he used to always say that he always used to say hello to mum <laughs> as well so always wanted to do that Karen, thanks so much for coming to chat to us and hopefully speak again very soon thank you have a good day so that is about all we have time for here on Apex Racing TV. But we are not done for the Ultimate E-Driver Series. We have the Championship Finale on Friday, same time again, 7pm GMT, where you'll see 40 professional racing drivers in an identical car go head to head. It's going to be an absolute cracker. And myself and Jack Canan and Marco Barbonera cannot wait to bring you the action. Don't miss it. We'll see you in a couple of days' time, and thanks for watching.